The next thing I want to talk about is layers. And layers are incredibly useful. What they do is that they let you display static images and video elements in WebXR. Initially, this may seem not very useful. After all, we can already display images and videos using WebGL. So we have no need for it in WebXR. But it has one big advantage. By letting the WebXR device API handle it itself, you gain temporal reprojection. So what this means is that text appears really crisp and clear. There's no fuzziness around it. It gives a really clear image to the user. This is perfect for things like videos. It means you also don't have to continually be copying the video texture into the graphics. The browser will take care of that for you. This makes it much more performant, letting you use these precious cycles for other bits in your scene. If you have to do any kind of text rendering, layers is where you want to do it. Because viewing text on a WebGL texture in WebXR is a really poor experience. But by putting it onto a WebXR layer, it makes it significantly better. And because of this, in the future, layers may act as the basis for using DOM content in WebXR. But that's still very new and something that might be coming in the future. But I'll talk about that later. To use WebXR layers, you use the XR media binding. So if you create a new media binding, and then you um, have a video element in your DOM, and you tell the media binding to create a shape. So there's a, you could use a plane, a cylinder, or a sphere. You give it the content, such as a particular video element, and you give it the shape and you tell it the information about whether it's a 3D video or not. It then takes this information and uses it to display it in your scene. And, but you should be aware that it is displayed on top of any other content. 